OpenAI just dropped their very first open source model since GPT-2, and it's a game changer. It runs 100% locally, costs $0, and performs on par with GPT-4 level models like O3 and O4 Mini. In this video, I'll show you how to spin it up on your own machine, integrate it with N8N, and start using it inside fully automated AI agents. No API keys required and no cloud dependencies. Let's build. All right, here is the game plan to get GPT OSS up and running locally inside of N8N. The first step we have to do here is getting our N8N instance installed and set up to run locally. We're going to use Docker for this to, just to make everything easier. After that's done, the next step we have to do here is install this piece of software called Olama. You can think of Olama as this piece of software that makes it easy for us to manage, download, and actually prompt against large language models on our own machine, laptop, or other device. This is just going to make life a lot easier and help us avoid dealing with any extra programming, scripts, or other code that we have to run. After that's done, we then need to install the GPT OSS model through Olama so we're actually able to use that in our connected nodes. And finally, we can hook up the Olama chat model inside N8N so we can start building, prompting, and shipping software against it. Let's go ahead and dive in with setting up N8N locally. So I'm here on the N8N documentation page for getting up and running with N8N hosted locally by using Docker. I do recommend you host with Docker because it's just easy to spin up and tear down if something goes wrong. And I'm just a big fan of Docker in general and use that in my day-to-day -day development. So the prerequisite that they mention here is you need Docker desktop installed on your computer before you can get up and running. I already have this, but I'll briefly show you guys the setup steps you need to go through. So if you come up to the top here, click on Docker, you're gonna be able to download Docker desktop for the operating system that you're on. I'm on Apple Silicon, but if you have Windows or Linux, make sure you're grabbing that right one. Go through the setup wizard and install steps just to make sure that's up and running. And on Mac, I can see that it is running here by this you know, green dot and Docker desktop is running. If you're on a different operating system, you can also pull up the terminal, go ahead and just type Docker in the command line. And if everything was installed correctly, you should see this help command printed out that shows you everything that you can do with it. So if you see something like this, that means you're all set. The next step here is gonna be scrolling down and going into this starting N8N section. So the first thing we gotta do is open up our terminal and copy this first command here, which is gonna create this volume, Docker volume create N8N data. This is essentially gonna create something on our file system that allows us to save our workflows, executions, debug data, all that N8N creates, even if we have to restart N8N in the middle of you know, a system reboot or for whatever reason. If you don't have this and you end your Docker container, which is just like an instance of N8N running, you're gonna lose that data. So make sure you don't skip this step when you're getting set up. So I'll copy this. We'll go ahead, clear this out in my command line. And we can see that N8N data was created. And so then if I do Docker volume LS, that is gonna list out all of the volumes we have installed on our machine. And so we can see I have on my local machine, we have the N8N volume created, which matches exactly what we need. Let's go forward to the next step here, which is gonna be setting up and running the N8N instance itself. So using Docker run, and then a couple arguments are gonna get passed in here that spins up our N8N Docker container, which is the N8N server on our own machine and is gonna bind all of the data that N8N creates to that volume we made earlier. And so make sure you're not skipping anything here. Once again, I'll copy this, I'll paste it in. And if everything works correctly, we're gonna see this message down here that says editor is now accessible via this local host URL. Let's grab that and see if we're able to now pull up our N8N local instance. And so perfect. Everything is set up here. And if you're seeing this for the first time, you'll need to make your local account. And we should be able to skip through this onboarding session to get into our N8N dashboard, just like we see on the cloud version. So that completes it here for the initial N8N cloud setup. Pretty easy to get up and running with Docker. And that is a path I suggest you take when building locally with N8N. All right, so that finishes up everything for step number one for setting up our N8N instance locally. It's time to move to step number two, which is gonna involve setting up Olama. I'm gonna come over to olama.com, go ahead and click on download on the homepage, 
and then pick the operating system I need to download this for. I'm on Mac, so I'll go ahead and download that. And this is going to give me this .dmg file that I'm going to be able to execute as soon as it opens up. So I'll click this, be able to drag that into my applications folder. And since I already have this, I'm just going to stop. But on your side, make sure you just continue forward with that process or follow the install steps you need for your specific operating system. That's all we have to do for now. A very easy setup step. And if you remember from the overview, Olama is going to be the piece of software we use to download, manage, and chat with large language models on our own computer. So we just completed setting up Olama on our own laptop. It's time to move to step number three, which is going to be installing the GPT OSS model inside of Olama so we can then chat against it and power our AI applications inside N8N. So let's go over here to this tab I've set up. It's under olama.com, under library, and then GPT OSS. And so if you want to search for this, you can just search GPT OSS. And this is going to give you the setup steps to get up and running. We want to go ahead and run this latest version of GPT OSS. And so I'm going to copy the model name here. And then inside our terminal, we need to run Olama run GPT OSS. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll go Olama run. And then we'll paste in that GPT OSS colon latest model version that we saw on the table. And so I'll hit enter and that's going to go ahead and get started pulling in the open model weights for GPT OSS that we're going to be able to use and run actually on our laptop instead of having to call into OpenAI's API. Everything's going to run completely for free and locally on our computer. So I'm going to let this run for a second and then I'll be back as soon as that finishes. All right, we're back here and we can see that the download here has completed to 100%. And if you see the writing manifest and the success message here at the bottom, you're good to go with the latest version of GPT OSS installed on your computer. Let's see if we can chat against it here in the terminal. Let's say, write me a poem about N8N. Let's see what it does. And so once again, this is all running here locally. And we can see I'm just on a, I think a MacBook M2 hardware. So not even the latest version of MacBook Pro, and we're getting a pretty instant response back here from this model. So that looks pretty cool. Let's um, see if we can exit out of this because we're gonna need to run this a little bit differently when it comes time to connect this to N8N. So we have our GPT OSS model now installed locally through Olama. It's time to move on to the final step, which is gonna be hooking up an Olama chat model inside of N8N that's gonna be connecting to and talking with the Olama model we just installed. The first thing we gotta do here before diving into N8N is gonna be running one more simple command in our terminal. And so we have Docker still open here, and then in this separate terminal over here, we need to spin up an Olama server that is gonna host the chat model locally on our machine that N8N is gonna be able to reach out and talk to. So we're gonna come over here and run one more command, which is gonna be Olama serve. It's gonna spin up that Olama software we already downloaded. And so if you see a message here, um, like some of these IP addresses appearing on the local IP, and you see this message that says listening on 127.0.0.1. That means everything's working as expected here. And then we're just going to leave this terminal open and not touch it for now. Let's go back to N8N. Let's go back to N8N and get started building a brand new workflow here that is going to connect to our Olama chat model. Let's make this just a manual trigger. And let's hook up a new LLM chain node here. That is gonna let us use Olama to make a single chat call. So we'll pull this in. Let's go ahead and add Olama, Olama chat model from the right hand side here, which is gonna be our credential that allows us to connect from NNN to the server that we just spun up. So in order to create this credential, we'll come here, click create new credential, and we're gonna see this base URL says this local host value. I can click save, but that's gonna give us an error right off the bat. Because we're using Docker, there's one other step we have to follow in order to get this connected and working to power our automations. I found this from this uh, self-hosted AI starter kit on GitHub that sets up something very similar with self-hosted NADN and Olama. If I search for localhost on this, we can see that in order to connect from our Docker 
container that's hosting NADN to the service that's running on our computer, which is Olama hosting the chat model, we do need to switch a URL here. And that is gonna be changing the base URL to this HTTP host.docker.internal, and it's gonna be this port number. So make sure you go ahead and copy this exact value. And when we come over to our base URL here inside our Olama account credential we're trying to set up, we can click save and then that connection is gonna be successful. So that tells us that NADN is now connected to Olama and we're gonna be able to chat together. Let's exit out and get started with the rest of this build. So we have this connected. We have our basic LLM chain set up here. Let's go ahead and do a quick set field result and let's see this automation in action. But before we do that, let's add in a prompt here and actually tell our LLM to do something. So let's have it write a LinkedIn post comparing N8N versus make.com. So let's execute. Model Llama 3.2 not found. So it looks like I missed one setup step here. And so let's click into the tool. Let's pull up our GPT OSS colon latest model here, which is gonna be GPT OSS that we just downloaded. And let's give that one more shot. So we can see this running here, which is good. And then if I pull up my terminal again, and we go to our Olama tab, we can see that this is actually processing and our NADN instance has connected to this Olama server and is interacting with GPT OSS. So this is spinning and working locally. Um, compared to a typical open AI API call, this is actually gonna take a little bit longer. And so that's something to keep in mind when you're building here. Um, it's gonna depend on the capabilities of your own laptop, or your own desktop computer. If you have a GPU, that's gonna allow it to go much faster. So just be aware of that when you're building. On our text field here, let's go ahead and grab in the text result so we can see what this looks like. So there we go. There is the simple setup for getting an LLM chain call working locally using GPT OSS. Let's go a step further and see if this works with the agent nodes inside of NADN. So I'll go ahead and add in a new chat trigger. We'll drag that in and let's add our agent node here and see if we can get this connected and running. I'll go ahead and pull this down. I'll drag in my chat model here, which looks like it's gonna work. Let's add some simple memory and let's see if we can get a tool working here too. So let's do just the thing tool for now and see if it's able to call into tools and do that effectively. We'll do another set field and let's see if we can get something running here just by opening up the chat. Think deeply about the differences and then and make.com and write me a LinkedIn post breaking down the pros and cons of each. So we'll send that in. We're gonna see our AI agent node running here calling into the chat model. If I pull up the terminal for our Olama server, we're gonna see this is running once again and let's see if we're able to get this thing tool called here. It does look like the memory was getting used as expected. And let's just wait a bit for that result. And there it is. We can see our think tool was executed during the log of this AI agents loop that was running forward. And if we pull up the result, let's drag in the output and we can see what we got here. So again, NADN versus make breaks down a markdown formatted output of this LinkedIn post and gives us some details here. So this looks great. Once again, pretty incredible for local AI models running here. And honestly, it wasn't that slow here compared to some of the other models I've tried in the past. So I think this is gonna open up a lot for local development and really allow AI developers, builders, agencies to start building, bundling and selling products to industries where it wasn't always possible before, like defense, healthcare, legal, things where privacy was a huge concern and API based large language models weren't able to be used. So very excited about this for the future. Hope you guys found something helpful here. Definitely let me know what you plan on building with GPT OSS. I'm excited to hear about it. All right, before you go, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Seriously, do it because we're gonna be breaking down all of the AI automations that we use to run all of our businesses. 
They're super helpful and we're gonna break down exactly how we do them on this YouTube channel. So make sure like and then subscribe and then you'll get notified when we publish new workflows that can make your businesses run 20 times more efficiently, just like we're seeing here at The Recap and the other businesses that we're running. The other item is join our school community for free. The link's in the description. You'll be able to get this template, this automation that we just ran through in this video, completely for free. You can go to school, and navigate to the video that you want, and then you can download the JSON output for the N8N automation. So like and subscribe, Join our free community to get this automation for yourself and we'll see you in the next video.